I need ideas. Um, I was actually asked this question in the last 30 minutes. What the what people are after is how to make money in the Philippines. Um, I'm going to specifically talk about Cebu, and the reason being is that's where I live. Um, the reason I won't say other places is because that's not where I live. <laughs> so I'll give you a few ideas which I know will work. First one is property rentals. Property rentals in the Philippines, there's a market for um, predominantly if you're an expat, the thing is not to rip other people off but to build your reputation up. Uh, personally I'd recommend probably a thousand pesos a month per household. Um, it's not being excessive and I believe the, the normal rates, uh, one month rent, um, one month's annual rent so you get one month out of the year so thousand pesos to me seems about reasonable um, guide services is something worth looking at but you're not really going to know the area too well um, but it doesn't mean you can't help what you can do is get in touch with the hotels and things find out what's available um, I had a guy stop me with me a few years back, but I was actually in the UK at the time, where my father-in-law took him around for touring the area. One of the things he wanted to do was shoot an AK-47, which is something we were trying to arrange. Um, that local knowledge, tourists won't have. <laughs> but there's a lot of things you can do. Um, the call centre industry is still growing, but I would diversify. Um, you'll you'll see um, Chris Drucker online here. Uh, he's he's on YouTube. Never met the guy, um, but he's set up in a similar way. I think he started with seven people in his kitchen, where we started with five in my little office. But the the point was, the call centre industry is still there. But I'll be honest with you, there's so many sharks in it. You need to really know what you're doing. Um, people will rip you off like no tomorrow. So you already have to have a network. The first step I would take with that is finding what works in your own town. Uh, ask your parents, ask your brother, sister, whoever. Is there something they can do um, to help you? Because all this work relies on trust. So if you said, um, we can do accountancy, and they go, okay, well, what accounts do you do? Um, well, we've worked on Australian accounts. Okay, what software? Because these are the sort of things people are interested in. But also you can hone your skills for that. You know, if somebody said to me, Matt, I need you to sit and analyze all this Excel data, I could do it no problem. I could develop uh, spreadsheets and stuff for them. It's not a problem because that's what I'm good at. I'm, I'm, when it comes to things in Excel, it's something I've spent the last X amount of years immersed in, unfortunately, <laughs> for, for my crimes. So, look at different things. The other thing is, it's not when you talk uh, BPO, uh, which is business process outsourcing, it's not all telephones. I mean, you could have the reception service. You could have somebody monitoring CCTV cameras for a business 24 well, not 24-7, but the out of hours, the 12 hours or 8 hours a night, um, where they just do it remotely via IP cameras. There's a business there. You could be promoting things for hotels, finding what the hotels are actually looking for, because some of them are very specific to clientele. Like the Waterfront Hotel, a lot of people would not stop there. Um, it's out of their budget. So... A hotel like that needs to draw it in internationally. So the scope there. Don't assume everything has to revolve around the Philippines. For example, if you can market properties that I have available in Spain, I will give you commission. Um, let's just say if, if you sold a property for me, you would get 3,000 euros per property. So you can see you don't have to sell maybe for a year and you actually quids in now you don't have to actually close the deal because I actually have somebody here that will do all that for us um, basically what I do is it, 
we open the lead up, I sell the lead on, they close the deal, and we get paid once the deal's closed. There's another idea. Doing the groundwork's another one. Um, if you, there's a lot of companies wanting to outsource. So you, there's two options here. A, you tap into my network, and I'll actually put you in touch with people that actually own buildings and already have call centers, but they're always looking for clients. And then you just take a percentage off the top. Next option is I put you in touch with people with buildings and already have a call center that's not operational, and you, you lease and rent the seats out third option is you actually turn around and get these seats and stuff rented out directly and you go in as a manager all of these options have uh, been done and worked for multiple companies there's currently um, Carlos Carlos a very good guy that uh, I've worked with in the Philippines highly recommend him he's doing a lot of stuff for an Australian company at the moment he's actually leasing some seats in another call center um, and we're talking about putting my call center back into uh, basically just managing certain clients. Other side of this, what can you do? Now, first thing I've got is I can do data analysis. I can do compliance management. I can look at a building and tell you that what bits are missing from their maintenance regimes, etc. Very specific, very niche, and very in demand can you do something similar website design I know uh, Philippine spin today was on about somebody in Cebu that didn't give him something he was happy with be very careful if you can't do it or not doing it for the um, what the expectation because I have this same problem with what I do because there's different levels of expect expectation uh, for example, if I do a survey on a building, there are, I could survey um, just the big plant, you know, the big AHU, air handler units, uh, generators, etc. I could do that plus um, the fire alarm systems. I could then add on to that fire doors, door closers, fire shutters, fire dampers lights sockets um, it's expansive and this is why I'll say I don't know what happened with Philippine spin but if they're if you're gonna do something make it very clear what you're doing and what you're you're capable of um, I never promise something I can't deliver um, it's, it's cost me money but at the same time it hasn't cost me my reputation because <laughs> uh, I know some I mean I, th I think I've seen it on LinkedIn with um, what's his name from Virgin Atlantic uh, oh I'll get shot for this okay his, his name slipped my Richard Branson he's turned around and says well never say yes to something that you don't know how to uh, never say no to something that you can't do um, you can work it out later I don't work that way especially the stuff I deal with it's very critical <laughs> you could kill somebody um, but I could understand if somebody said oh transportation from A to B and you tap into the local resources um, but the Philippines infrastructure is an issue so be aware of it uh, wedding planning um, I know Paul Whiteway still does this stuff but there's room for expanding in that I'm sure there's other people that can do it as well because the net network of expats is all over the place so there's wedding planning, there's uh, birthdays, there's um, first trips to Cebu, etc. Those things, there's a market for. This, this uh, channel wouldn't exist if people weren't actually interested in stuff they didn't know. Having somebody look after them while they're there for the first few weeks, um, I would pay for, you know, it, in an unknown, unknown location. Um, I remember talking to Chip about um, I was looking at going into Iraq a while back and we discussed about certain specific things that I can't really talk about but I wasn't gonna just turn up <laughs> at Baghdad airport let's put it that way um, 
so there is a market for that stuff now on a local scale be aware locals do everything cheaper um, it doesn't mean you have to do it cheaper it does mean you're going to have some severe competition when I opened the internet calf another seven or nine opened nearby within a month they got ridiculous but the pace of pacing machines with the coin slots they will they'll print money all day long they it doesn't matter how busy everybody else is doing because they just sit there kids just sit there and they'll just play it you'll not sit out there you'll just come in at the end of the day empty your cash out of it they work uh, the two big machines I think it is they actually call it I don't know what the um, the two big two big is water um, you put one peso in and then you get a bag of water those machines work you need to work those in an area so you'd actually need somebody to help you with that I can probably do that depending on what area you're in um, money lending is a big business but it's very very high risk and not only financially but can be hazardous to your health uh, so I wouldn't advise any expat to do that unless you actually knew what you were doing 110 percent uh, the thing with debt even in the West is people never blame themselves they'll blame the banks they'll blame XYZ um, and I would agree with them to a point I mean people don't generally get angry at themselves for it they generally get angry at the banks etc you're the bank this is why you've got a potential risk there it could go badly wrong so those are a few ideas but what you need to do is do what I do I have this little book and uh, each every couple of pages is something different uh, let's for, for example this one's Philippine ideas these are for these videos I sit there I'll come up with an idea and I'll write it down then if I go two pages in Spain ideas same thing but it's for Spain. I go another two pages. Is Spain ideas on basically what I have to do, like getting my paperwork up to date, etc. Go another couple of pages. It's about positive thinking. Another couple of ideas on videos. And then as you go in, uh, I write things down. I come up with ideas and I write them down, and then I'll go back to them uh, when I've got more time to think about them. So you may be driving past something because this is what I mean it's like I was doing something the other day actually when it's when I had this I was looking at something on the back of a car it was just a bumper sticker but it was a company so I write the company down why did I do that because that business is already functioning and the fact that they're driving a brand new um, 4x4 is profitable it's an internet business so have a look at it see what it can make what are they doing can I produce the same can I un undercut them or come in at the same level can I do this without too much financial risk to myself can I drop ship drop ships another business drop shipping is actually where you turn around and will sell produce from China etc but not actually carry any stock so somebody goes in Amazon for example uh, I want to buy a camera okay camera ordered junk sends to you comes on your desk and you go okay send it to the uh, Chinese warehouse the warehouse goes here there's your camera but it doesn't actually come to you just go straight to the customer that's drop shipping that can work but it depends how you set it up you probably know what I was talking about dog food in, um, earlier in the week I've got 13 pallets of dog food a week available to me uh, sounds crazy but if I can sell all that dog dog food every week I don't need to work again in my lifetime um, and that's what I'm working on at the moment dog food um, there is a market for all sorts look at what you've got why dog food everybody here is a pensioner they're all old age retirees with dogs there's I, there must be a, like one dog for every third person so there's a huge potential for dog stuff that's why I'm doing it so be aware you've got to keep your eyes open and see a niche um, another one was a friend of mine he was doing cigars rolled in the Philippines and selling them to South Koreans idea for somebody get somebody to do the cigars for you then hit the hotels with it 
do the hotels, try and get into Singapore, uh, not Singapore, um, South Korean Airlines, I can't remember what they're called again, uh, but try and get your yourself established. The main thing here is to look at what opportunities are available and just hit them. Um, you see, if you go through all my videos, you'll see we've had a piggery, a call center, uh, sorry, piggery, internet calf, call center, uh, we've had, well, we have a financial business as well. Um, what else have we got? We've got the website stuff that's still ongoing. Um, got, got all my consultancy stuff that I do personally. And we've got the property rentals. We've got properties we rent for other people. Uh, we've got properties we rent in Spain, Philippines, and we're expanding that out. We've got property sales in Spain. We've got property sales in the Philippines. It's not one business. It's tapping into everything. That's why I'm quite happy to like share this to you because the fact is I'm saying, look, don't stick to one thing unless you're really good at it and you're expecting it to really take off. These YouTube videos make a small income every month. They're not, it's not fantastic income, but um, what you do get is people talk to you. Now, if people are talking to you, you also get that engagement of trust. Now, I'm not here selling any product. I'm not, I haven't asked anybody on my channel to actually buy anything. I, w I don't go, Amazon's down there. Sometimes it is, but I don't actually say, <laughs> um, just to say, look, this is what I use. If you're interested, it's down there. But the fact is, there's a market for everything. Um, people are build are building on trust these days. They spent their childhood, adulthood, etc., being slapped in the face with advertisement, advertisement, advertisement. Myself, I actually block adverts. Um, I don't watch TV. I, um, if I actually watch a TV series, it's actually on a computer, etc. Um, I don't do adverts, and it's not me being negative. I was getting insurance the other day, life insurance. Um, now, it's a sm it's an easy product, you know. All I want to do is go online, doo -doo -doo, give me a quote. Doo -doo. They don't do that in Spain. Ten companies want to call me. So what do I do? I just don't bother with it. I look for insurance elsewhere. The whole market. When somebody needs to call me about something, I'm not answering the phone. Because the fact is, all that says to me is I'm selling you something. Um, that's how awkward I am. Now you might find it quite funny coming from somebody who actually operates a call center. Yes, it is. But at the same time, I didn't say I'd buy my own products. <laughs> Although I would, solar panels, I would. But Spain, they tax them to the hill. It actually doesn't make it viable to actually have one. Um, I might do a video on that at some point. But yeah, those are some ideas. And it, I just want to put them in the pot there so you can go away and go, okay, that's a good idea. Well, what about a restaurant? Restaurants, I would go with eatery. I'd go with something simple, Filipino, da da da. It all depends on the what you're looking to sell, sell to. Because um, most of the restaurant guys I've known and the bar guys, they won't actually tell you the truth. They'll go, oh, we're doing okay. And then they'll go, no it's not very good the next day and then it's yeah it's been fine for months and i'm like all i'm asking you know i'm not going to sit and say oh joe blogs his bar is not doing very well or the steakhouse is terrible um all i'm saying is look how are you doing <laughs> it'd be nice to actually get a good gauge there um so food wise eateries i think if it's in the right location can do well but the profit margins are going to be minimal um, Olio, which is my favorite steak place in Cebu City, it does okay. It's 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 often when I'm in there, me and the wife are the only customers. Let's put it that way. But we spend at least four thousand pesos a, um, a night when we go in there. Um, it's this this one. I'm saying I don't really talk about my food stuff because I know. Um, Somebody was asking me the other day, can I recommend stuff? I don't really talk about the food because we do spend a lot of money on food. 
<laughs> when we're in Cebu, we go as a lot of expensive places. Um, I know 4,000 4, pesos doesn't sound a lot in the West, uh, which is what? That's probably about 50 pounds. Um, but in the Philippines, that is more than half a month's salary for the average Filipino. That's why I don't engage in that conversation too much. Um, but yeah, that's another topic for another time. But for business wise, look at what you've already got. Now, as I've said already, if you're in Spain, if you can sell my dog food, come and meet me, call me, because I can make you money every week. Um, in the Philippines, oh, sorry, in Spain, if you can sell our properties here, you win money every week. And all you need to do is get, get them on the hook. Um, and once they come here and the deal's closed, you're looking at at least two, three thousand euros a hit. So if you, the deals will get closed. Let's put it this way: the guy I deal with has already his own commission this year is already over seventy thousand euros. Um, call center stuff. I can, if you can tap into a niche somewhere, I can help you build it. I'll tell you, there's two things here. First thing is, if you get clients, I'll get you the call centers. If you get um, people that need setting up a summit, I can help you with it. And I'll be honest with you, while I'm sat in Spain at the moment, I'm sorting these bits and pieces out. It's the best time to approach me because when I get really busy, I stop answering emails and stuff simply because I don't have time. So if you do have something you want to ask me, you do have something you want to discuss, you want to hit me up now and go, Matt, I've had this idea about doing X, Y, Z. Um, I, I've, I've actually got a guy um, that's recently come to um, the Philippines that's doing virtual assistance. Now, his business is already, he's already brought in a load of business in Canada and several other locations, Japan, and I can't remember where else. Now, at the moment, he doesn't need any assistance. What he wants to do is actually develop the business, which is where I can help. Because if, if you come in to me and say, Matt, I've got somebody needing 12 virtual assistants, I can put you in touch with him, and he just works them out between yourselves. There is money there. Um, the internet is a big tool. It's, it can offer you um, the opportunity to make good money. It can make repetitive money, regular money, it's extremely useful but the main thing you need to use though is this and expand your network i've talked about this with, uh, before dave in australia I've, we've discussed about the networking as well the bigger your network and the more you're trusted in it the more you're likely to be successful because people will bring things to you now it's not i'm not saying oh somebody's come up with an idea so i just stole it I'm talking about people bringing you an idea and you help develop it with them. I've got several software ideas. I've got a guy developing in the Philippines at the moment for stuff in the UK. Um, now, the first first bit of software will make zero money because we're doing it for free. But off the back of that, there's going to be stuff that makes some serious cash once I market it to the right people. Because I'll, I'll be honest with you here, Dealing with corporates, they hear people telling them they do great stuff all day long. Great stuff. Fantastic. We're, we're the best for your business. Do you know how many of those emails I respond to myself working within corporates? The answer is none. Um, they're lucky enough to get past the gatekeepers to actually get to my email box. Um, you won't get, on, get me on the phone if you've been canvassing other people. All those numbers are automatically barred. But if you produce something and go, Matt, can you have a look at this for me? You will get a response. Why? Because you're selling me a product. Not by selling me it ver verbally. You're saying, have a look at this. If it's a part of crap, tell me. At least we're being honest with each other. I don't need to hear words. I want to see a product. And this is the way I deal with business. I want the product. 
once I put the product out there and go, there, that's better than anything else on the market, isn't it? You can have it for free. That they'll bite the apple because once they have it, they want to own it, and that's where you make your money. Right? Thanks for watching.